Welcome to Performing the University. So in 2020, a whole world of academics and students suddenly discovered that work from home was also going to be live from home, play from home, and study from home. As a result of everything that transpired in the world, particularly in the Australian sector, the context being our rapid pivot to emergency online teaching in first semester, meant that when we approached our second semester in 2020, we had a little bit of experience and match practice around designing what would come next. But one of the things that we found out very quickly was that there was a lot of uncertainty around how did we go from a world where the university was a place. And this came through a lot of discussions that uh, the British Advanced Higher Education Academy was, they were hosting a lot of webinars around how do we prepare for the new normal, the COVID normal, the online pivot. And a consistent theme was this idea that in the pre-COVID times, we would have spaces and places, we'd have stages. As a teacher, you would be walking into a classroom, you'd walk into your lecture theater or your seminar room, and you would be going on stage. You'd be able to put your game face on, you'd be ready for what happened next. As a student, you knew the moment you sat down in that room, it was education time and it was on. And then we rotated across this new normal of the same screens that we used for work, we were using for socializing, for family gathering. We were running our university courses from kitchen tables that doubled as work desk, food desk, and life. Uh, the whole world basically came down to a much smaller footprint. And in that, one of the things that we found as a challenge was how did we get ourselves into the mindset, get the mental preparation and that switch over to its university time, it's go time. So one of the things this semester of 2020, semester two, Australian time, 2020, I had the opportunity to ask my students a set of questions around what did they see as the steps necessary to switch on. So what we have here is the idea of connecting. Uh, we created spaces. We carved out spaces within our environments and we had the university desk or the university chair. Uh, in my case, I set aside the back room of my apartment, which I'm broadcasting from now, as the university space. When I was in here, it was work time, it was go time. I could literally walk into an office and have a space. But for a lot of other people, it was all shared conditions, it was all shared locations. So it became a question of how did we pivot from one end of the couch to the other, from one side of the table to the other. It became a performance, a ritual, a pre-match, step up. All right, I'm going to university now. I'm just going to move across to the location where that's my study space. Now for some people they were able to go to the campus itself and have been doing their digital delivery, uh, digital experience from within the familiar circumstances of the physical campus. Particularly for students who are residential on a campus, being able to walk out of their room, walk downstairs into a common room or into a library or a shared space and participate in the university became a way to signify it was go time. But for those of us operating out of our more confined spaces of our houses with uh, greater levels of lockdown and restriction, it was about carving out a physical spot in your existing venue. Where was it within the house that could become the proxy campus? Even if you needed to just get out the uh, little bits of tape and just tape off a little square on the floor and say, campus. It was enough to initiate that, all right, it's go time, it's university time. The second space that we encountered was the idea of suiting up. Uh, whether it be from the sports, the work, or 
in the other environment, putting on the university uniform, putting on my uni gear, putting on the, in my case as a teacher, I had two custom shirts prepared that were the course codes of my respective subjects I was teaching in the semester two. And that would be my time to go. It's put the shirt on, put the coat, put the course code on the chest, and I was ready for class. What I found out from my students in this conversation is that they also had outfits that they saw as their university clothes. So despite the fact that they had no intention of switching on their webcam, and for the majority of the semester, we never, as a teacher, I never saw my students, and that's a good thing, uh, because they were most comfortable contributing via audio, they were comfortable creating a space where in the breakout rooms they'd switch the video on to talk to each other. They created these outfits that were effectively external personas. It was time to study, it was time to put on the uni outfit. And connected to that became this idea of, as well as suiting up, was preparing. The grooming rituals, the pre-class all right, I'm gonna be on a webcam, I'm gonna do my hair, I'm gonna shave before I go live and start recording, and as required, put on makeup. This did nothing to dissuade us from quoting the opening lines of the Muppet Show as part of our pre-Zoom ritual. But in this was also the grooming ritual became in of in and of itself a signifier of I'm switching my mind space. I'm going to have a class soon. I'm going to get ready for class as if I was going to go out to the space. So part of the consumption rituals that we're used to in marketing and consumer behavior around personal grooming and societal expectations, even within the lockdown environment, the only rule that was definitely uh, rescinded was haircuts didn't count. You could brush it, but you weren't expected to have it in any way, shape or form stylized or even properly uh, dyed if that was your thing. So there was a change in the perception of professionalism around hair, but there was an uptake of the professionalism around as part of the suit up, get ready for class was the grooming look ready for action. And again, this was tied to being in front of the Zoom screen, being ready for the virtual class by physically preparing as if you were going to a physical world event. Which meant that for the students, Zoom was as real as a tutorial. It was a space where they wanted to present their best. They wanted to present themselves to the camera even if the camera wasn't going to be engaged in a broader context. Which also says that one of the things that changed is this innate idea that with the camera off, the student was off. The camera was completely secondary to the experience. It was about time to get ready for class, suit up, get ready, get put my war paint on, get my uh, uniform on, and it's good to go. Now we also picked up a couple of other pre-match uh, rituals and discussions. One of the things that the students, uh, particularly undergraduate students, made a, an effort to do was to replicate one of their on-campus activities. And there was a bit of a discussion around the idea that before coming to a lecture they would stop to get a coffee. And the pre-lecture coffee was a ritual in and of itself. The coffee was discussed to be at varying levels of importance. The key was the artifact, the object. Walking into the lecture theatre with a cup of coffee, with arriving 15 minutes late with Starbucks, was of itself a performance. And all of them admitted that they were in a position that at any point during the seminar, they could get up, walk across the room, activate the kitchen, and yet the preparation phase, the what made it real was 
get the cup of coffee, get the can of energy drink, have it at the start coming in. Loading up the Zoom, got the coffee ready, I'm going to class. So the performance of a pre-match, pre-game ritual, they became the transition point of gonna have my game face on, got my study uniform on, got my study, got my cup of coffee, I'm ready for this. My mind has moved to its uni time. We also had a bit of a discussion around some of the objects and artifacts that were associated with the performance of the university. And one of the things that came through was that there was a real sense that they needed to have a dedicated set of tools. So there was a notepad and there was the university pens and there was the university notebook. So even if they were using objects and artifacts throughout the rest of their life, uh, one of the things that they were very clear on is course by course, the subject needed its notebook. You took your notes in your course code notebook. You were doing the university. So our proxy artifact, what became the campus, was the lined sheet or the grid map sheet in front of them became a campus space or campus proxy. It was proper and real when they were writing it down. They've got the pen out, they've got the notepad out, and it was go time. Which also was one of the things that over the course of the semester, there was a bit of a discussion around how notes, the students started to explore what they were doing in terms of annotation and note taking. And the performance of the university as an artifact where the university is occurring on screen and it's occurring through the behavior of writing things down separate from that screen. So there was still a sense that typing up notes in words or taking notes on PowerPoint slides or annotating into a Google Doc during a class wasn't quite university. It was a thing they couldn't quite articulate, but it didn't feel as university as the notepad. So pushing the keyboard aside or pushing the mouse aside, getting out the pen and paper whilst the Zoom was on created a greater sense of I'm in class now. Which also means that we've got this opportunity to tie this back into the whole uniform space and now artifacts. So creating a little university kit, creating an opportunity for the students to not just set aside a space, but set aside some objects and items to perform during occupying that space. The other element that came through quite uh, strongly was that all of us felt, both students and myself as a staff member, the real value of bringing an artificially mediated structure back into our lives in order to create those focal points. Particularly for students who were studying by uh, non-direct means. So for those students who were engaging in the downloadable content or the education on demand approach, setting some alarms on the phone, setting some alarms to say, it's three o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, it's time for me to do my class. It's time for me to download the file, watch the file, engage in the file. There was a real sense that time still needed to be boundaried. So it was very easy, everyone agreed that it was really easy to suddenly find yourself losing the day uh, that without these external cues of classes starting and stopping, it was very easy to lose a sense of time and lose a sense of when things needed to occur. So for this, many people engage the mobile phones as their proxies, set up alarms to go off at certain intervals to create a sense of structure. Again, as a teacher, one of the artifacts that I brought into effect was the five minutes and three minutes to show time alerts where this would pop up, the alarm would sound, and it would give me an opportunity to transition over to put the work uniform on, grab the pre-event coffee, get load up the software that I needed to run the classes, do all of the pre-match preparation off 
a distinct audio cue. It also meant that we have a bit of a conversation around anyone who's got a face-to-face -face class needs to record that noise of a class finishing both within the room and next door because that was a an artifact of performing the university that people missed. The audio cues around them of students coming and going from class was something that we haven't replicated in the virtual environment and has been missed more than people expected. It was part of the ambience, the soundscape of higher education and its absence has been felt. In terms of software, the load up, uh, this is where, this is more from my side as a teacher that activating the virtual private network, activating the university VPN was the on switch of its work time, click. VPN is on, I'm on campus. It also was in terms of performance. Load up the Zoom client, activate the PowerPoint client, have the files ready for transfer. A series of pre-steps, even down to one of the aspects of my seminar-based teaching and learning, I missed being able to distribute documents within a class to be able to provide contextual we're going to work on this worksheet live in this event now. Here's your mechanism you can use for recording it. What I instead found was that I was able to create Word documents that ordinarily I would have printed, but now within the Zoom client, I could, a couple of minutes into class, say 10 to 15 minutes in the class after the admin slides were complete, hand out a virtual file, hand out a virtual piece of paper to my class for this is the worksheet for this afternoon's seminar. And that was a ritual of the teaching performance. It was, it's time to engage. It's time to capture ideas. It's time to have experiences worth annotating. In part, this also created that challenge where it was, for me, the virtual giving out the document uh, the students were also a little bit uh, on the side of we like to have the notepad to signify that we're engaging in the teaching and the class and the education here is a document going onto the screen to replace it so there are some challenges there but we're working towards that and finally just to say from a teaching perspective as an educator this semester was about a full virtual, no on-campus presence, all Zoom or learning management sites. It was built around the premise that I was fortunate to be teaching e-marketing, so it was very much a lived experience. But it was also a lived experience of the rituals that we talked about for the going to work. Uh, the small personal ritual of when it was time to teach, having the work boots on, having the shoes on. Yes, I'm sitting at home at a desk, no one would know, but it didn't feel like work if I didn't have the boots. And it not feeling like work meant that I wasn't performing it as work. Same approach with a lot of the other aspects of the elements here. They helped me carve out space. And they were substitutes for the walking from my office to the lecture venue. The pre-flight ritual at the lecture venue, logging into the venue equipment, activating the microphones, all of the physical embodied practices that we had in our teaching spaces, finding substitutes for them inside the space we've set aside in our houses to create our virtual classrooms. And the last aspect to this in terms of the performance and the practice was switching off. After the class, you hit end meeting on the Zoom, but you also then get to power down. It's the end of the workday, the boots come off. It's the end of the teaching session change out of the uniform. It's the end of the education point, close the notebook, 
set the notebook aside, the class, the equivalent of walking out of the lecture theater, finding that digital closure, finding that performance of closure of accessing the campus as much as entering the campus was one of the aspects that across the semester my students were reporting to be a particularly important element so that they felt that there was still a separation of work, of life and of study so that they weren't constantly feeling under pressure, they weren't constantly feeling that they were, even those living on campus were feeling that they weren't always at work or at uni. And for those of us who have been working for home for the extended period, finding that off switch is one of those important facets and the rituals. So my question to those watching this is what's in your routine? Which parts of this do you find to be most useful? Is it the creation of a space within your location? Is it the outfit that you always wear for class? Is it suiting up that process of transferring from I'm at home to I'm getting ready for the Zoom? What is it that signifies to you that it's time to switch modes and that these steps enable you to find your ritual, your practice that says, now it's go time. It's time to do the university.